Hey everyone, I'm Nato King, and last time on Psychonauts, we explored as much of Whispering Rock Psychic Summer Camp as we could. So now, it's time to report to the coach for basic braining. Let's see what the inside of a mind looks like. Are you sure you wouldn't rather run around a bit more in the sunshine first? I'm ready, sir. Well then... You're late, soldier. Now get in here and give me 20. So, this is it. The mental world. It looks like a dentist office. A mental dentist office. It's a recruiting office, kids, and I'm here to recruit you for the greatest job in the world, being a psychonaut. It's about fighting a war for mental freedom. Are you ready to face torture, insanity, and death? Because this is your last chance to chicken out. Oh, me, sir. I'd like to chicken out, please. Too late, soldier. But you said... There's only one way out of here. Fighting! I want one of you chickens to sock me square in a jaw. I warn you, once you do, the war is on. You're not gonna get another chance like this, I guarantee it. Right on the chin! Yeah, this is our fighting tutorial. Ow! Pick on someone your own size! Or bigger, like me. You gonna punch him? No way! You do it! There's nothing really in this office. It's just a tiny room. So we're gonna have to punch our way out. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. Let's go, go, go! What kind of obstacle course is this? That kid just got killed! A mental obstacle course, you bleeding heart! He's not dead, his astral projection just got kicked out of my mind! And I'll kick your astral projection out of here too if you don't get moving right now! So this is a basic movement tutorial, really. Here's where we're supposed to learn how to jump and recover from falling if you don't jump in time. It's just basic movement stuff and all the mechanics that we're gonna need to know to get through the game. Move, move, move! Relax, that's just a figment of my imagination. You can run right through figments. They help you rank up, and when you rank up, you earn new psychic powers. So whenever you see a figment, suck it up, soldier! Come on! Get that figment! Be a figgy piggy! Who's coaching? Look! Hey, what are you staring at? We all have emotional baggage, kid. Why don't you make yourself useful? Sort some of it out while you're in here. Keep your eyes peeled for a tag that matches. Could be anywhere. Every mine's got five bags in it. If we match all the tags, we get a rank up. There it is! Now, you will pick up that tag and you will put it on that bag you just found! Unless you'd rather just drop and give me 20 right now! Yeah, there's no reward for each individual one. You only you get the reward when you've got all side. five of them. Show it who's boss. Ladders are pretty simple. You go up, you go down. I'm going to collect as many figments as I can, but I'm not really going to sweat it if I miss a couple along the way. Yep. 
flagpoles are just like ladders, only thinner. Watch out! Fire down below! You might notice that the figments take the shape of things that kind of belong in that environment. Here, most of them look like soldiers, weaponry, shrapnel, that sort of stuff. like a test. There's probably a secret more advanced route. What's that supposed to mean? You think you're more advanced than me, new kid? Sorry, what? I'm not stupid. You're stupid. The coach is stupid. The whole camp is stupid. That thing flying at you is stupid. What's flying at me? Whoa. Bobby dumped his foot. That's what? You're stupid, new kid. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks for saving me. Well, actually, I was saving this plant. Huh. Never seen one so meaty before. I have. It's been appearing in this creepy nightmare I keep having. You're having nightmares? Oh, I've been reading about how to fix those. Will you let me see one? Hmm, no. And she puts us back on the broken bridge. Now, I'm pretty sure it is possible to make that jump, but it's really hard. Like Raz said to Bobby, there is a different route we're supposed to take to move on from here. And it's just down this hole over here. Onward and upward, soldier! This is just a pretty simple series of jumps over small platforms here to help you hone your jumping ability because the jumping is going to become a lot more difficult later in the game. There are tools that will help us with it, but for right now we've only got our jump and our double jump to rely on. And the fact that we can hang on to ledges if we accidentally overshoot by just a little bit. The controls feel kind of weird, I think. They're not bad for the most part. You'll do what you're trying to do. But as you've seen, sometimes I tend to hit the jump button a little later than I'm allowed to. You'll have plenty of time to stand around when you're dead. And I accidentally fell right back down the ladder. So this is the other side of a big chasm that runs right through the middle of the level. And it's a little out of the way. You can get in here if you manage to make the jump across the bridge the first time. But I'm going to go back in that direction just because there are figments out there. And those particular figments, it's a very good idea to get while you're in the level right now. You can come back later, but it's a lot later. And there's another thing about this level that actually makes it much, much easier to get the figments the first time through. I'm going to try to get all of them, but like I said, I'm not going to worry too much if I miss a couple. I mostly just need enough to reach certain ranks at certain key points in the game. This is the ledge that's on the other side of that broken bridge, and... Well, there's nothing much over here except a couple figments, so I'll try to make it back without falling. Normally, if you fall, you will lose a life, or the equivalent thereof. In this game, there are mental projection layers, determining how deep your projection into the mind is. And if you lose all of them, you just get kicked back into the real world. You're like molasses going uphill in January, with crutches. But right here and now, we're under the coach's protection, so if we lose a layer, it doesn't actually count against us. Only this time through the level. Is your name Joey? No. Because I'm going to call you Slowy Joey. That's not my name. What was that, Slowy? I can't hear you. You're talking too slow. <laughs> There are way too many portions of this game that are quotable. 
And up is progress, so of course I want to go down and into this out-of-the-way corner. With a little bit of glitch geometry. And we get our first mental health power-up. You can sometimes see little brains up in the upper left corner of the screen. That's my mental health. I haven't encountered anything that'll damage me just yet. Well, I guess the fire on the ladders. And the second piece of baggage, tucked way off the main path. They usually are. It's not very difficult to find all of them in most levels, but you might have to do a bit of hiking. Yeah, if I do run out of mental health, obviously I lose an astral projection layer. Aside from that I can't lose any this time through this level. And if you lose all your astral projection layers, you get kicked out of that mind and have to come back in from scratch. But there's no game overs, there's no notion of limited continues or anything like that. I think I managed to get all the figments here. I usually manage to miss one somehow, but that's why I was being really careful. Now that kind of wall, you can climb it up. Down, sideways, whatever way you want. Just get on it. Quick, like a monkey. Yeah, climbing in this game, at least, is fast enough it usually doesn't feel tedious. Hey, slow down, you kid. If you pass me or Bobby, you'll make us look bad, and Bobby will pound you dead. Bobby, can you hear me? Where are you? Don't leave me alone out here, Bobby. I'm frightened. I'm frightened! Any M! You're like molasses going uphill in January! With crutches! Watch those mines, kid. They'll blow you up like a ten cent kazoo! Hey, Dogen. What's wrong? I keep blowing up. Follow me. I'll help you through the mines. Okay. And this is something that's optional, but Dogen's our good friend. We want to help him, and he wants to walk right into the mines. So you pretty much have to stay right in front of him and lead him on the safest path that's available. I can't do it. I can't do it. Yes, you can, Dogen. Just follow me. Okay. And if he gets scared, you have to go back and reassure him. Otherwise, he'll make a beeline for the nearest mine. I can't do it. Yes, you can, Dogen. Just follow me. Okay. It's not difficult, just a little tedious. Look, Raz! I didn't explore it at all. Good hustle out there. Hey. Um, this is for helping me out. Okay, bye. And our reward is five yeah. arrowheads. The arrowheads we get in Mental Worlds actually contribute to our total back in the real world. So that'll get us to the plateaus we need to buy stuff a little bit faster. And I think that's all the figments out here. There are a couple of them left. And once we raise this flagpole, we can open the door to the next area. You can see they're opening in the background. Looks like a giant mouth, which is kind of weird. I'll check the collection screen just to see. There are six figments that I haven't collected yet, but I see some of them in the next room. Probably not six, though. The plane's going down, soldier! Hit that door and Geronimo! Oh. Hey, no one told me to pack a chute. Did Washington Not have a chute when he crossed the Delaware? Left. Just and jump, then we turned sissy. right, and then we turned up. Is there, like, a climax to this story? Didn't I mention the gopher yet? Thought I hit that. Okay. Alright, I accidentally stepped on Vernon's head and interrupted the start of his story. It's basically just that this plane reminds him of a time he went on a walk with his dog Lady. And then we turned a soft right. And then we turned a And he's got about a million voice clips that he'll play randomly. And then we stopped and asked for There's only one way to shut him up. And then I gave Lady a bone. That's a relief.
And speaking of shutting people up... Hey, look! It's Raz! Yay! Raz is here! Yeah! Maybe you'll be able to beat this darn game! We can't do it! Yeah, we're no good, and the coach won't open the gate until someone wins! Yay, Raz! Just punch that to start! Well, don't want to miss any of the figments. Shut up, shut up, shut up! We'll never give up on you, Raz! Yeah, we're gonna keep cheering you till you win! Alright, that's enough incentive. Let's win this game. Once I can hit the button. You score enough points on this course, kid, and I'll give you a reward. It's basically just a bit of training in using the fist in time-critical situations. The first round isn't very difficult. You've got a lot of leeway in how long it takes you to hit the targets, how many of them you need to hit. At the moment, there's no penalty for missing. This is not meant to be an obstacle, just something you have to stop and do before you can proceed. And I'm almost done. Things speed up a little bit at this point, and you're really meant to stand in the center and just kind of hey, spin now in the appropriate direction. <laughs> that was a good reward. But we can get better rewards if we play again. Most people, they got something to hide. They store away their shame, their dirty little secrets, and these tiny vaults in their minds. But the enemy has not allowed any secrets in wartime, are they, soldier? So go ahead and bust open this vault. I got nothing to hide. Yeah, if we win that punching game, the last round we get a rank up. But I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Ah, good. Inside each vault is a little slideshow of the person whose mind we're in. Here, of course, we get to see some of Oleander's wartime history. A true You'll hero. Enjoy that. One of my favorites. Of course, that one he wanted us to see. Usually the contents of mental vaults are things that people want to hide. And over here we've got our first teleport worm. So I could use him to go back to the very beginning and get those figments that I missed. But like I said, I'm not going to sweat it just yet. There will be time to go back for them later. Now here we got a machine gun aiming at us, and if you stop for too long when you're not behind cover, it'll hit you. I don't think it does a whole lot of damage, and there's plenty of mental health here. But you're supposed to be training on stealth tactics. And we can always stop to help baggage even in the middle of a war zone. Yeah, there's absolutely no reason that you need to make any effort to collect all the figments while you're under fire. Because once you get to this last wall and punch it, the machine gun shuts down. And now we can go back and pick up anything in this field that we missed without any danger whatsoever. But of course, I never pass up a figment unless I have to. Or it would be really, really tedious to collect. And we'll have to break our way in here with a palm bomb. Classic zilch indeed, considering he seems to be running the wrong way. And here's our first little bit of mixed-up gravity. 
That kind of thing is going to happen a lot. You get used to it. Now you'd think there'd be something down on the floor of this room, but there's nothing down there. And once again, pushing up the flag opens the door to the next area. Although this still counts as part of the same area. We just got this slide. You want to be careful not to miss any figments here, because otherwise you got to go through the whole level again in order to get back to the top. And from there, it is possible to jump all the way to the top of the next part, but I'm not going to worry about it. You can grab poles like that and swing on them. It's all about upper body strength, you know? Mm. Yeah, that figment's going to be kind of tricky to get. I have to come at it from this side, I think. There we go. And this is really just a tutorial on the swinging mechanics. Reminds me a lot of the Prince of Persia 3D games. And that leaves only one bag to go. The annoying thing is if you start swinging too quickly and then change direction, then you just keep swinging the same direction. You pretty much have to let go to get him to stop. And this wall looks breakable. Hold it right there, boy! That's a mental cobweb! You can collect them with a specialized piece of equipment once you get checked out on it. Till then, just steer clear of them. Getting the mental cobweb duster is one of my early goals in this playthrough. That's why I'm being so studious about collecting all the figments that I can. Because we can't get the cobweb duster until we're at rank 20. And right now I think I just hit rank 4. No, 5. Now, for some reason, I thought you could swing from this rope to the next one. Turns out you can't. And that's what it looks like when you lose an astral projection layer. Although, you can see I've still got five. Like I said, this particular run through the coach's mind, you won't lose any astral projection layers because he's protecting you. That's never going to happen again in the game, so you want to take full advantage of it while you can. And we got another breakable wall. As you can see, the trapeze is very difficult. Most cadets can't handle it. You might just want to stay away from it. You still get a participation ribbon at the end of camp. Yeah, that's alright, the trapeze is nothing I can't handle. But I want you to pay attention to this vault that's secured behind a mental cobweb. There's absolutely no way we can get to it right now. We're going to have to come back much later in the game to do that. So, for now, the trapeze. I got some practice with this in the kids' cabins area. So I should be able to handle it. And there's the final baggage tag, and you can hear the last bag crying in the background. There it is. You're like molasses going uphill in January! A lot of things in this game look like background, but you can actually walk on them. And that's the final bag, so we get a rank up, and we unlock primal memories, which are basically concept art for the current level. whole bunch of figments over on this precarious section, and some that are floating around on predetermined paths, which make them really annoying to get. So I think I just missed my opportunity to jump through that one. I'm gonna wait until it circles around again. Dang, my bowels move more than you do, Pokey! 
Because every figment I miss now is points that I don't get to come back for for a long time. And I hate missing stuff like that. It is possible to collect every figment the first time you go into each mental world. With one exception in a mental world that's kind of a multi-stage thing. We'll talk about that when we get to it. Here you can most absolutely get all of the figments. And the figments for any particular mental world come in point values that are an exact multiple of 100. So you'll get a rank up with nothing left over. Here's our quick tutorial on grind rails. Ah, sucker. See you at the bottom. Grind rail physics in this game are kind of weird because it's not always clear what direction you can go. And I think you're supposed to jump back and forth and try to get as many figments as you can. But there's three rails, which means that I can get all the figments in three rides. Less waiting, more motivated! By intentionally hitting Bobby Zilch at the bottom of the grind rail, I lose no astral projection layers, because once again, I'm under the coach's protection. But it puts me right at the top of the grind rail, and I can just ride down a second and third time, and collect the last of the figments in this area. Mentalis, Uber, Alice. A little bit of patience goes a long way. I don't know how he manages to stand still on the grind rail, though. Anyway, this is going to be our last trip, and we will actually deal with Bobby. I let him have his fun, because it was convenient for me, but we're going to get the last laugh. And as a matter of fact, we're going to steal one of his classic moves to do it. And one last teleport worm, just in case you want to go back and grab any figments that you missed. There aren't very many in this section. Ah, the old rolling tunnel of crazy lords bit. An old one, but a hard one. What you gotta do is... <laughs> ah, who are we kidding? You're never gonna make it through that. <laughs> Now this is the place where it's probably the most critical to get all the figments your first time. Because it's really easy to die here, and if you've only got a limited number of deaths, you're going to have a hard time collecting all the figments and surviving. So usually, you know, I'll stay here for a couple dozen attempts if I have to, just to make absolutely sure I've got everything I possibly can. The figments, of course, stay collected through deaths. You only ever need to get any of them once. So if it takes you a whole bunch of tries, as long as you're earning those figments consistently, you will eventually make it to the far side. I'd say it's not as hard as it looks, but it also is deceptively difficult. The logs keep rotating, and while gravity isn't as much of a problem as you might expect it to be if this were a real-world scenario, there still are some physics to it. And it can be kind of difficult to walk straight sometimes, especially since the platforms themselves are rotating. And you thought I'd slowed it down because that was the last run, didn't you? Now this is the last run. You kind of have to toe the line between taking it slowly and making sure you don't fall off the edge. But you've also got to move a little quickly because once the log you're on gets past the center point, you're going to start losing your footing pretty quickly. And once you make it to the end, you've got to be able to jump to safety. Wait too long and the gap is too wide. And if you want to go back, I think the only way to do it is to jump off the edge. 
So that's that challenge taken care of. One more cobweb that we can't collect. And here we are at the end. Although there's not a whole lot here. Hello? Hello? Guess I'm early. Some kind of big platform, anyway. Looks like somebody was going to welcome us and then didn't bother to show up. And if we go around the edge, it's perfectly safe to walk on this lower floor here, but there's nothing in it. Just that one cobweb over next to the door. I have no idea what happened to the camera there. I don't think you're supposed to go back there, so let's just head into the door and see what's behind that curtain. Son. Now just what in the Sam Hill do you think you're doing in there? I was just looking for a way out. Oh, sorry about that. Didn't think you'd get to the end so fast. Dang, I didn't think you'd get to the end at all. You surprised me out there, kid. Here, you've earned this. Your first Psychonaut Merit Badge. But I'm always glad to see a soldier come back from the field alive. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta go back in. I left some good men back there. Way to make us look bad in there. You are in trouble now. Bobby Zilch ain't happy. You better watch yourself, Goggolicious. What's that, hair boy? You want a piece of me? Hey, Brainiacs, settle down. Why? You worried I'm gonna hurt your boyfriend? No, because Sasha Nine is standing right behind you. Your performance, young cadet, was outstanding. I'd like you to report to my lab for some advanced training. Ooh, Raz the Spaz is gonna be in a special class. Benny, remind me to give him a... Special beating later, okay? These tests are unauthorized, though, so I can't actually ask you to come. But if you happen to drop in, well, what could I do? Let me just give you this. Remember, your talent will always set you apart, Rasputin. Sometimes isolation is a good thing. It can lead to important discoveries. Wait! I don't even know what your lab is. Is this some kind of test? Sometimes isolation is a good thing. It can lead to important discoveries. And now I'm hearing things. Great. Yeah, that is a clue to the location of his lab, but there are plenty of those. They can ask anybody about this button to get more. You know where this button is from, Coach? Hey, you stole a button from the geodesic psycho-isolation chamber! No, I didn't. I... Bobby Zilch gave it to me. Shoulda known. That kid spends more time in the cooler than in school. Reminds me of myself when I was his age. Well, go put it back! Yes, sir. Hey, Coach, where is the G? Don't you know how to use your map? Right, yes, sorry. Hey, did you hear that, Coach? I'm gonna get advanced training from Sasha Nine himself. Hey, hey, you stay away from that, Egghead. You hear me? Egghead? Permission to speak freely, sir. Denied. Listen, Private, those scientific jokers, they don't know what it really means to be a psychonaut. It's about being in the field, not cooped up in some underground lab all day. It's underground? Aha! Uh -huh. Don't even think it! That brain tumbler contraption of his will turn your mind to mush! I need that brain! I mean, you need that brain! Now, dismiss, soldier! I've got some serious thinking to do. Lots of important planning. 
What kind of planning? Huh? What? What kind of planning are you doing there? In your sleep? Hey! Never assume a soldier is sleeping just because his eyes are closed. Trust me, that tip could save your life someday. But... Dismissed! Hey, Coach, will you teach me telekinesis? I told you, Private, I've got a lot of scheming to do here. You're dismissed. He doesn't seem to respond to being here. On sale now in the main store, we have a special on Dream Fluffs. You hear me? Dream Fluffs. They're good for you. Keep a pocket full of these for a quick boost of mental health. That sounds like a good idea. In the next episode, we'll explore the rest of camp and go in search of the GPC. See you then.